Good day, everyone. My name is Vogelow, and welcome back to a supplemental episode of Let's Play Star Trek Online. With me once again is... Megalomaniac, starting in the exact same place the episode we just recorded ended. Yeah, uh, so we mentioned that uh, it is currently the uh, First Contact Day event, and uh, there are three new missions. In fact, these are entirely new missions from what I've been told. Uh, for First Contact Day, Day of Honor, and Republic Day, which is the new Romulan uh, version. Um, also the one we're starting with, because we we're already on our Romulans. <laughs> conveniently. So this one has us... I mean, because uh, the Romulans are a glorious, long-lasting empire. Yeah. I mean, Republic. Well, uh, yes. In fact, actually, the, uh, the timeline of this one is a little goofy, because... For us to be doing it at our current, um, at the current spot, spot in the story for us, is actually a little weird. Granted, the exact uh, same thing happened last year when we did uh, uh, first contact yeah. day on our Federation characters who at the time were yeah. like level twenty. Yeah, and I mean, long I could, if you really want actual... me to, I can go get my level fifty Rama and just be like canon. Eh, whatever. But yeah, so. What we're basically doing is we're going to go and we're going to see the uh, the captain of the Romulan flagship, uh, which I think doesn't technically exist by the time of the storyline that we're at, because the no. Romulan flagship is a scimitar. I mean, admittedly, there are three scimitars orbiting the new Romulan system right now. Uh, like player ro uh, Yeah, player, like player ones. Scimitars? Well, so, yeah. you know, those exist, but... Yeah. Um... No but, you, you know, like, whatever, it's... Like like Becca just said, when we did uh, First Contact Day last year, uh, we were talking to the crew of the Enterprise, like, you know, ten videos before we actually saw the Enterprise arrive for the first time. Yep. So... <laughs> Dude named Piccolo Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the ARW Daily Dose 2. Yes. I forget what ARW means. I guess advanced realm. Uh, no, I think that's. Um, hmm, I have to look that one up. Okay, I'm sure you'll annotate it. Because it's it's it is definitely a um, Republic warbird, but it could oh, be the. Oh, are these ones we can only do on our on our. Uh, no, we have to do, do them se uh, separately. Hmm. Sads. Yeah. Uh, we get to fly the Lisette. No, Lisette? I know they've set it before. I'm trying to remember. Lisette? Lisette? Lis uh, Lisette? Uh, I don't think I can Ooh. check that. Oh, wait, no. Here's where I, here's where I would check it. Uh, oh, no. Oh, they okay. voiced right. it. That's pretty cool. But yeah, we saw it in the. Uh, uh, we, we saw we saw the the Lizette in um, uh, the, uh, last the Dyson feature. The Dyson, yeah, the Dyson Sphere introduction. Yeah. And here we get a nice cutscene view of how awesome scimitars look. They do look very awesome. In fact, I need to confirm which variant of the scimitar the Lizette is. I I don't think it's a I don't think it's a straight up scimitar. I think it is a um hmm. I think it's a Tulwar. Right, so you can walk around, talk to the crew. I like how or one of them you? is a is a uh ex -borg. Yeah. There's a uh there's a nice um Reman in the front with an eye patch. There's a what's the dude back? What's the dude like right on the right as soon as you walk in? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Like that's Neral. Oh, Norel. Oh, oh is he a that's Suleiman? Uh, yeah, he's Suleiman. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they would like add Suleiman in as like yeah, like they. It would be, it'd if be not really playable easy. like bridge officers for, for that. Yeah, it'd be really easy for them to justify 
Anyway, it, it, it suggested that you could actually talk to the rest of the bridge crew, but uh, I haven't been able to. I haven't either. Um, can I help you? Oh, so you can talk to uh, Jerry Captain Jirok. Yeah, ask a little bit about herself because uh, actually I discovered this as I was doing research in for a previous episode, but uh, she is the daughter of the uh, oh, I can't remember his name, but uh, yeah, he yeah, I think it's, oh yeah, well, he's, she's talking about it right now, but it's an episode of uh, of uh, oh, same. I thought it was during TNG. It's a, it's an episode where he's basically put off to a uh, backwater post because the Rom the Romulans uh, weren't didn't like didn't really trust him, and so they kept they were feeding him false information to test his loyalty, and he, he basically decided that enough was enough, and it turned and so he he handed over all the information to the Federation, and only to have it turn out that it was just all bunk. Um. I've been in the military since before we lost Romulus. I proved myself as an officer mm. during the Dominion War. Received my first command soon after, and had a. So yeah, you can just... I don't remember that episode off the top of my head, but, but I am not maybe it's a defector. That, there are that would make sense. My father died when. Can I yeah, know, I'll I'll I mean, well, that up. also, yeah, that also be a pretty appropriate name it for would the episode. Be. <laughs> Oh. In which case it was like season two TNG, in which case it's probably why I don't really remember it, but unlike the founder, we have developed weapons specifically to combat these Oh, that's kinda cool. Oh, there you go. So now you can talk to the bridge crew after you've talked to her. And you ask Oh, ask them about who they are. With the fleet when we lost the home world. Yes. Oh, uh, they're. Th the fact that their uh, doctor has been around forever is probably why she's wearing the, uh, the padded cloth armor. <laughs> Do you have a question? My designation is Gaius Celan of the Republic Warship of the Sand. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh,. The Liberated Borg guy is a Liberated Borg for reasons that you pretty much could have seen coming. They didn't want him? No, he was with the Tal Shiar as they were trying to get Borg technology and got assimilated. Eh. Oops, sorry about because, that. Yeah. Well, that's a good reason to quit your job. Oh no, that dude is the Fairy, not Sulevan. Oh, okay. Which is actually even weirder. But actually, actually, you know, he justifies it pretty well. Like, so the the big thing about the Deferi is that they believe in balance in all things, mm -hmm. and really, the way the Romulan story is kind of written is that they are also kind of in balance between the two major powers. Yeah. So this guy says that, hey, you know, if I can be on the flagship of these guys that are trying to be in between these two major powers, then you know that goes with my beliefs. Do you have a question? That's actually kind of interesting. That's pretty cool. Jolan True. Did you want something? Why do you want to know? Fine. I like how they voiced all of them this time. Like I don't remember. I think some of the. Some I think so. I remember like Sean being voiced in First Contact Day, but I don't think. Uh, I, th I think they had a few of them voiced, but not all. Yeah, it wasn't. I didn't. It wasn't. I don't remember it being to nearly this extent. Yeah. But like, I liked how they've. I like what they've done, like, basically building the a crew for each of the major ships. Um. Recently, uh, one of the, th the news stories from this week uh, Cryptic did was uh, the announcement of the um, changes to the character editor. So, like they're mm -hmm. adding, they're adding a bunch of new options. Um, 
And, yeah, it's supposed uh, to be called out said that making characters that weren't that occasion like, was kind of weird. Yeah. They really turned out weird looking. I have the coordinates for the test. We're ready uh, to But the interesting thing was they the big thing that they showed was the uh, the crew of the Dyson. Um, mm -hmm. And how, like how they were all very different and you know they this was showing off some of the stuff that they were doing with the uh, the new editor. Yeah. It's really subtle, but it looks nice. Yeah. Anyway, so apparently as part of this mission, we get to fly the... Uh... Oh, yep, yeah, it is a Talwar. Nice. Okay. Like sitting there. I like how she's standing next to you, sitting in the, the captain's yeah, chair. Yeah, Kate's in the captain's chair. Also, oh, they're letting us play around with the... Uh, Biomolecular photon torpedo launchers. I have never actually used a scimitar before. This will be interesting. The scimitar has or kind tolwar, of. As it would be. Yeah, the the tall wars have kind of goofy, like they fly kind of goofy, because you look at them and they're massive ships, but oh, too slow. Yeah, but they they kind of turn. A little bit faster than you would expect a ship of that size to. Mm -hmm. uh. She's got scatter volley. Sweet. Gravity well two. Yeah. Do they have any unique skills? Um. No. 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 Don't yeah. think so. No, I'm not seeing any unique skills. Oh well. It's just the the unique abilities. Yeah. yeah I've never actually yeah, I've never actually had opportunity to use a scimitar. A scimitar? Yeah. Actually I guess that's a neat, a neat thing for this mission. Uh certainly sales of the scimitar go up. <laughs> <laughs> or any or any of them, because by by the uh, same token uh, that you are flying the scimitar for this, uh, you are. I imagine that you're also going to be flying the. Flying uh, the Boris Q and the. the well, yeah, I, the well I have an Odyssey. Yeah, the, not, the, not the like Sea Store one, but I have the. Uh, the, the original style one? Yeah, the. Yeah. Actually, was that for the first First Contact Day? Uh. Was it? No, it wasn't, it wasn't for a First Contact Day, but they did, have a, they did have a special mission where you got to. They just warped in. Another scimitar. In fact, actually, well, a falchion, but you know, still. Well, yeah, because they kind of cocked this mission up. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's it's a a falchion and two uh, hap axes. Uh, I will tell you as soon as I'm done, not dying. <laughs> uh. Uh, same. Okay. That yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So this mission is uh, following off of the uh, the Dyson uh, the the uh, the last yeah the sphere mission. yeah the one the one or the Undyner thing again yeah um, it's, it's as if they're trying to hype us up for a new season where yeah the Undyner are a major threat and they're also showing off some of the stuff that you can get from the uh, the new uh, the new reputation. Either the Undine are extremely oh, I can't. There we go. Either way, we need Romeo and plasma beam arrays. Okay, so it's plasma weapons, just the biomolecular warheads. The I right, hear she's about to say the name. The Undine show themselves again. They will find the Republic ready and waiting for them. I will take yeah, it is just Lizette. And then okay. I'll leave the rest. So, yeah, so, uh... In case folks were wondering how the um, uh, how the scimitars feel, that's a good way to uh, to try it out. Yeah, it's a lot, it's not as slow as I figured. Yeah, like you look at it and it seems like it would be a big. Oh sluggish. man, I, should, I forgot I had fighters too. I should have used those. Oh yeah. Oh, so you can choose between the uh, the marks or the uh, the non combat pet, which is a young uh, uh, sectopus. Oh, you have to choose? Yeah. Lame. Oh, but it gave me... 
a daily prize pack. Oh, so maybe we can do this more than once. Oh, wow. You can choose either Dilithium Ore or some lo Lobby Crystals. Huh. Hmm. Uh, I'm going with non-combat pet on this guy, obviously, because I probably, you know... Yeah. Like, Well, actually, that's a good thing to do for this mission as well, because, uh, I mean, when we go on to our Federation characters, we should already have the, um, the thing. Yeah. All right. So, speak, so uh, on that note, uh, we're now going switch. to... Switch! I will take the lobby though, because yeah, weak. yeah, because the I, I, I don't can, I can actually transfer this. Yeah, I don't need um, I don't and need. I will show off the pet last next time. Yeah. All right. So, we're on the so next we're gonna go to what, our Cleon or our, our. Let's do Cleon. All right, let's go back to our Cleon. We'll get to see Grimlock again. Um, the Grimlock King. I have literally not played this guy since we... Uh, yeah, so I'll, we'll have to... And actually, he's on DS9. Yeah, so we'll transwarp back to Kronos. As it's going to be there anyway. So this will probably let us use the Boris Q. Yeah, that's probably called. what it'll be. Uh, so let's... Oh, actually, I could... Invite you to the team, but this is a solo mission anyway. Yeah, well, it's kind of disappointing, but uh, given how it goes, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. So, okay, transport to Kronos. So, last year the Day of Honor uh, ceremony was basically handled basically the same way as First Contact Day. You went into an uh, went to a dock and talked to folks. Uh, this time. We are doing it basically the same as what we just did. We're going to the Bortask. And, uh... We are going to... Uh... Oh. It's actually not at, uh... It's actually not at Kronos. Where is it? Uh... If you say Deepface 9, I'm gonna... I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, that'd be... <laughs> that'd be real <laughs> upset. Oh, no, it's at Kronos. Oh, okay. So it's just oh, it, it wants you to do it from from sector space. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one did too. Yeah, yeah. You just have to leave. Yeah. Just have to go to sector space and immediately go back. Man, it's a good thing that you know, like resource resources are like not an issue in the future. Yep. All right, so I'll fly over to the board task. IKS Bortask. Drop your shields for transport. Once our guest is aboard, you will join the security pickets in the outer system. Oh, and now it's going to show us a nice cutscene uh, highlighting the uh, the Bortask, which also is actually a pretty nice looking ship. If it, other than the fact that it kind of suffers from one of the main problems that Klingon ships in general has, which is that they all kind of look the same. Yeah, well, it's, they don't look the same as much as they, they kind of look the same. They have a okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. They look. The same. I mean, yeah, it's like can, yeah, if you shoved it side by side with with a, a Borcha, you would obviously know the difference. Yes, but, yeah, yeah, all of them have the kind of you know long neck, hammerhead like yeah, bridge, you know, front area, and then sweeping. Yeah, like if if, if you have all their if you if you put any two of them next to each other. Like there are obvious differences, but when you just are talking about the silhouettes, like yeah, it's I, really similar. I remember I was in a um, Mirror Universe uh, event the other day, and I had a I had the Bortask on my team, and I couldn't tell at first whether it, the person was using a Bortask or whether the person was using the Moog, because like the two of them look basically the same. Yeah, and I'm, part of it's probably familiarity. Too, yes, because... like I, yeah, that's another thing as well. Like I don't generally like, see a lot. Honestly, of... you could you could honestly say the Odyssey and the Sovereign look really really similar. Yes, and it's true. Yes, but but I can just tell the difference more easily because I know what the Sovereign. You know, I know the Sovereign. I know the Odyssey. But at the same time, like the Federation also has a uh, the thing where lo while they do have a fairly. Uh, 
uh, typical design as well. Like they they still vary them quite a lot. Like yes, they've got the the big forward hull with a, a neck section which sweeps back into two rear nacelles, but like you can look at like a an Intrepid is is clearly different from a Constitution, which is clearly different from a yeah. Galaxy, which is clearly different from an Akira, which is clearly Defiant. different from a Defiant. Well, Defiant's clearly different from anything. But like yeah. you can look at all the major ships that the Federation has made, and yes, well, there is a typical design uh, style that they use. You can tell that the major types are very obviously different. But yeah, again, it could also just be familiarity. I mean, I know a lot more about the normal Federation cruisers, mm-hmm. and most people who play Klingons in Star Trek Online don't use their battle cruisers. Like, you don't see Bortasks or Moogs or any, or Vorchas or anything, any of those all that often, except as enemy forces. No. Um, the more often than not, when you see people flying uh, KDF ships in um, the other stuff, like you know, in in STFs and the like, they're usually flying Raptors, Raptors or Birds mm-hmm. of Prey. I've seen a lot of um, blah. Recently, obviously, I've seen a lot of the whatever their science is. Oh, to. yes, I've been seeing a lot of that as well. That one, while it also is, I imagine that's you know a, a it's new and shiny yeah. aspect. Um, while and while that the the uh, Klingon science destroyer also is the same generic design, its coloring and its armor style is clearly different enough that you can tell it's the science destroyer. Mm-hmm. It still has the same silhouette, though. Yes, it does. Admittedly, the um, the Romulan one has the same silhouette as a as a Dideradex, even with a little sleeker. Yeah. Wait, it? It's not, no, it's it's well, I don't know. Like it's kind of more like the. Uh, to me, it looks like a thinner Dideradex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like it, it's like a, it's like a cross between the Dideradex and the Daylan. Yeah, pretty much. Honor and glory to you. What is it? I may be only a junior officer. So the Klingon is obviously yell a lot more when you talk. To them. Yeah, because they are always angry. Greetings. What do you require? I am from Kila Bree, a small. I, I still really like how they have. Like a little bit of story for the uh, the bridge crew of the flagships. Yeah, that's cool. I don't suppose you have an actual medical. What is it? What is there to tell? I am Orion. I am. And it's also nice how there's a lot of variety in the bridge crews as well. Yeah. Even the Romulan one was, I mean, it was largely Romulan, but you know they had. The Borg and the Deferi too, and, the, and a couple other reasons. Yeah, like even the uh, the Klingon one. Like, yes, there's a bunch of Klingons on it, but they're also different. You know, they're different enough. Mm-hmm. You know, they got an Orion Doctor, which is actually kind of interesting. Oh yeah, this one has a. I don't know if you're at the part with the ship yet, but I forgot it has a bird of prey flat head. Yes. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's a... Actually, that one's interesting. And it, the uh, the Odyssey has a similar uh, similar one. And uh, Klingons mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, Klingon and Federation captains can buy one of them through the fleet store if they wanted to use them as a normal escort. So, in silliness, um, one of the guys on the on the board task has cannon scatter volley as a power. And you don't have cannons? No, don't have cannons. Oh, weird. Because you know the board task can actually equip dual heavy cannons. 
Yeah, but it's which all, is all beam arrays. It's here. kind of a dumb thing because the Vortath. Actually, are they beam arrays or beam disruptor arrays? Yeah. yeah. Like the the Bortask having uh, the ability to equip uh, dual cannons is goofy because it turns like a cruiser. Yeah, I know. There's a few things like that. Like it's because it, the Avengers not so yeah. bad because it's I think it turns a bit faster. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, can't the um, can the Galaxy X equip dual cannons? The cannon? Galaxy, yes. Um, which is also goofy. Uh, now less so than before, but still really weird. Cause since uh, you can get a Galaxy X that can turn actually relatively fast for a for a cruiser. Like if you get the um, if you have the full uh, set uh, set for it, mm -hmm. um, the base turn rate of the Galaxy X is six, which is you know slow. But you can, um, if you have both the saucer separation console and the um, antimatter spread console, uh, you can bump up its base turn rate to eight. That's not awesome, but Which, not too bad. Yeah, but that that basically makes it a science vessel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, the other the other tactical officer has cannon rapid fire too, so it's like. <laughs> not good abilities to have on a cruiser. Yeah. Now, why are you using? Why do you have that instead of? Or, okay, they at least have beam fire. Yeah, at they will. have beam fire. Well, well, that's good at least. But yeah, like not having cannons and yet having that other one is like that's just goofy. Mm -hmm. For that one, you get a Batleth. Yeah. A, uh, so, oh, I guess it's a scaling one. Oh, that's nice. I mean, not that we need a yeah, scaling Yeah, not that we need a scaling one, because we have the Sword of Kaelas. Yeah, like, why would we want another... Well, I might grab that Batleth anyway, just to... I grabbed it, because I'm obviously not going to use the marks on this guy. Yeah. Because you can't transfer marks. Yeah, the Sword of Kalos yeah. actually is better. So okay. Because the other thing I would I would have looked into is whether the uh, that Bathleth looks better or not. But like, come on, you're comparing it to the Shard Sword of Kalos. Yes. Also. Oh, I'm betting the the daily things account locked. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense considering what you it know, uh, what it provides. Yeah, I didn't get that so. Yeah, I mean, considering it's giving lobby crystals, mm -hmm. and uh, like actually a decent number of lobby crystals. So I wonder if you can just flat out repeat the mission each day. Yeah. Well, actually, if you because oh, if you yep, look at it, yep. yeah, because the mission, when yeah, you it turn it in, it says... Yeah, it countdown timer. Cool. So hey, some extra yeah. marks. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't realize that it was doing that. I mean, yeah. 35 marks is not a whole lot, but I that mean, mission... I for, mean, for five, for like five minutes... Yeah, that yeah, that mission's like. Five I don't know if I'd realized I would have done it before. Um, yeah. Yesterday, I guess. So it's not. Yeah, because I didn't. I actually didn't bother to do it on my on my main character because. Okay. Uh, Change characters. Yeah, I didn't bother to do it on my main because I like I was gonna say like you know I wanted to record it so. What? 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 I accidentally turned your sound down. I didn't hear anything. Just. Oh. Was it important? No. Okay. <laughs> Ignoring me, my goodness! What a no! Jerk. It's like I moved and and volume will got turned down. I uh, I just I, I didn't do start uh, do the mission yesterday because I you know I I knew we were going to be yeah, recording. Yeah, that's the same thing. I'm like, oh, you know, I was going to do this, but we'll do it tomorrow. So yeah. So let's hail. Yeah, no, I was already at space dock, so I just need to. Yeah, that's yeah, so all my. So I just left. Um. Can you see me? Where are you? Where are you? I'm just outside. Well, what are you in? Uh, I'm in a um, a bulwark. The uh, the ultra source. I see you. I'm down hey. here. You see me? What are you in? Oh, yep, there you are. 
I'm flying up to you. Hi. Yeah. Hi. There you are in the Normandy. Are I'm you, in the Normandy. Are you, are you using the uh, the Breen engines? Yes. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with the Breen am engines. I? Yes, I am because they are what I had. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. Like they're actually still pretty good engines. And the. I'm uh, using. Oh, I'm not using the Breen shields. I should probably fix that. What am I using for shields? I'm using the Solonet shields. Oh, okay, yeah, those are good shields. Yeah, why am I not using the Solonet other stuff? <laughs> Maybe I didn't run the mission three times with this character. Oh, weird. Maybe you should do that. I should. Well, maybe. Like, this, this, the full Solonet set is really only good if you're using the Science Destroyer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. It's good on other ships. Well, um, it's, it's, it's better than what I have. Better. It's well, actually, yeah, it's probably better than using the uh, the Breen one. Like, yeah, not that the Breen one's bad, but the, that Breen set is specifically designed for fighting Breen. Uh, Breen. Yeah. Oh right, we have to go to Mars, which is in Sol System. So just, it, turn around. just yeah. No, I do not want to warp to Alpha Centauri right now. <laughs> so I get for having a Gem Hadar as my my. Yeah, for me, officer. for for me, I I came in and my Reman was saying that he was uh, he he was uh, jealous of me going onto the Enterprise and he wanted to take a tour and I'm like, okay, buddy, that's like I know this is canned dialogue because that just is nonsense. Fly to the Enterprise. Okay, so now I'm going to get a shuttle pod and fly around it for about five minutes while staring off into space and smiling like an idiot. <laughs> Alright, come on. Load this. Load the cutscene. There we go. If you're, have you shown off your Odyssey yet in any of these missions? Oh. Or any of the, any of the what? videos? It didn't even show me a cutscene of the Enterprise. Well, huh. it's the Enterprise, it's not like it's that important in the grand scheme of Star Trek. My goodness, I, I don't think I've shown off flying my Odyssey. Oh, yeah, I didn't get one either. Oh well, I'm sure we will get there. Weird. So, questions is, do I still need to... Do you need something? Yeah, okay, you still need to talk to Sean first. Yeah. That's led to some issues, but I'm sure we'll be able to overcome them and represent Starfleet in the manner it deserves. Do you need something? We're here for a weapons refit and some minor repairs. Oh, neat. You can, if you ask him why he's here, he basically, uh... Yeah, he references the 2800 he, series. Yeah. Without you, we would have lost DS9. Now that the undeep... Do you need something? You'd have to ask Starfleet Command as to why. And, yeah, I think if you talk to folks, it's they're all basically going to say the same things as on, uh... Uh, previous First Contact days. Oh, and... Yeah. And there he says what first contact day is. The Enterprise is here for repairs. But the main reason we returned is to test some You're right. With agents like Cooper in our midst. Well, it's beginning to remind people of the Dominion War. Given that you hmm. Good day. I think there's a few new people on here though. I was posted to Deep Space Nine after Ezri death. Let's take a look. Let's see, here's a commander. We have to okay, I just want to make sure. I don't want to accidentally start it like I did. Serving on the flagship in a time of war is difficult for everyone on the crew. But I feel that my skills and exp may I help you? Huh. Hey, what's her what's her position? Oh the counselor. Well, it's, yeah, it's the Enterprise. The counselor sits right next to the captain. Yeah. Oh let's see. Yeah, like uh, if you ask her what her station is, she says, "Yeah, I, I'm basically here because uh, Admiral Crusher was saying that this is a good idea." But like, I'm wondering if I'm supposed to know who she is because if you ask her about herself, she names she name drops Esri. I don't know. You know, she might be. Given they reference that Ezri commanded the Aventine, that might be something like in the books, like the books did. I don't know. I never read them. Yeah. 
I just know the best of basically is Esri's ship from whatever book she's in. Yeah, which is probably why I don't recognize her. Maybe that's I I would look that up. I always found it funny that Esri is the one who got the ship, given that her entire position on the show is, "Hey, I'm a new kid." <laughs> That said, I'm sure she's a, a as an effective counselor as Troy was, and she probably won't crash the ship into a planet. Yeah, she seems slightly more uh, experienced. You can say it; she's old. Oh yeah, well, yeah, she's sure. Alright, some of these people actually do have new dialogue. It's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, did this... I don't remember talking to this... Uh, most Jarell of these people... Cav yeah, most of these... Actually, I think... I think Jarell Cav was there, but I don't think you could talk to her. She talks a lot. Yeah. But I remember nothing of the occupation. After the Cardassians left Bajor. After graduation, I left Bajor. I've always... I mean, she's like, she's like, got like three pages of dialogue. It's pretty cool. She's real talkative. Good day. Oh, they got one of the uh, the Cadians. Oh. Okay, oh. yeah, she's. I don't think it was voice before. Yeah, she's the one who tells you who's like, hey, the Enterprise E was at at first contact too. Yeah. So, you know, in case you didn't see first contact. Have you seen First Contact? I have seen First Contact. That one was actually okay. pretty good. Okay. Have you seen Rathcon yet? I haven't. Okay, you should get on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someday. I think there's actually some of the people that were at First Contact Day that is that aren't here, but at least Kiriyoshi is. Well, you know what we should do? You should go back in our old video and like look. Yeah. I like how the science office of Bajoran. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's, I, you just, when you see Bajorans, the, all the born Bajorans you've seen are either like, uh, really spiritual or. Mm, oh, yeah, okay, here we go. Basically. Okay, there's one of the guys I was looking for. The, uh, the Vulcan was just standing in the front of the ship for some reason. Staring out into space! Do you have another question? When I was uh, but yeah, sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, yeah, it's just most most Romulans you see on the show, or sorry, most Bajorans you see on the show were either really spiritual or ex, ex freedom fighters. Yeah. Like ex, like guerrilla freedom fighters. <laughs> and he he admits that he has no bedside manner because it is inefficient. The uh, the default bridge for the Odyssey is also a really really good looking bridge. I I really like the. Uh, holographic displays. Yeah, they look nice. Do you get Do you get this when you buy the ship? Yeah, if if you buy the uh, the Odyssey, this is the the default uh, bridge for it. You can't change it to another one if you so desire, but mm -hmm. it's this is honestly one of the best looking bridges in the game. Yeah, <laughs> I like how they reference or uh, Kiriyoshi references how Warp delivered his sister. Yeah, <laughs> that was a fun episode. Where's the Where's the doctor? Uh, he's uh, in the front behind the. Um, oh, I see him. Yeah, yeah, right, right next to the glass. Starfleet has authorized the testing of these weapons on some disabled Undine bio ships. We don't have many of these at our disposal, 
but this will be the next best thing to a live yep, so here's the odyssey class the odyssey class is also such a beautiful looking ship it is a very worthy ship to be an enterprise yeah uh, the, all the design work that went into it is the, is really really good I, I really like this ship a lot like the uh, that like that hole in the neck is actually kind of a really neat uh, neat design idea mm-hmm see now it makes sense that I'm controlling because now I'm, I'm a vice admiral <laughs> so be like give yeah. me your ship for a minute yeah yeah like for us it's it's one of those things where it's really goofy for a lot of the ranks because like the the missions need to scale yeah but yeah like now it actually oh, wow. is something that... okay what's that i guess uh it's it's bridge off from layout kind of surprised oh. me oh the i like it though gravity well yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Odyssey has a pretty nice uh, bridge officer loadout. Can we... we got the rookies. So we'll pop the Aquarius out. I was just say, might as well might as well separate the ship since we can. Yeah. Oh yeah, the saucer separation is real rad. Uh, one of the neat things about using the saucer separation on the Odyssey is that if you have the full uh, three-piece set, uh, the uh, the saucer will also use the worker bees ability. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's three-piece, or is it just the two-piece you need that on? Well, it's not yep. Turn to yep. You need either. you need the full three-piece. Uh, yeah, it uh, the one the two-piece bonus gives uh, plus one. Turn rate, so it makes its base turn rate seven. Um, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, which is actually a pretty decent turn rate for a cruiser. It's it's fast enough that it doesn't feel sluggish, but it's slow enough yeah. that you can get uh, a pretty decent uh, um, a pretty decent uh, strafing run on the on your opponents. Like it 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 turns just enough that you don't necessarily have to always be adjusting your your turn uh, what does this version have is it's so th with the stuff they have equipped on it in here it's uh, turning at 11 and a half degrees a second which is like yeah that's, that's probably why it feels right yeah it's yeah that that feels not too far off from my uh, science destroyer Admiral Tuvok warned us the Undine would be taken. Well, they died pretty fast. Oh yeah. I'll take the Enterprise directly to Earth's space dock. But yeah, I really like the Odyssey. I'll have to play around with it some more myself. I have so many ships that I really like. I have so many ships in general. And so little time to use them yeah. all. Yeah. It was no, yeah, I, I like how I I should Probably when I redo that mission, I'm gonna take a look at what they have uh, setting that thing up because that's pretty good. With the equipment on there? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. But anyway, so that's the three. Um... Now I will take marks because I already have the phoenix. Yeah. So that's the uh, the new first contact day missions. Uh, which are yeah, they're all kind of similar. Basically, but... the same mission. Uh, they give everyone an opportunity to use their faction's uh, flagship. Uh, in, you know, in case people wanted to buy the uh, the ship, <laughs> buy our ship. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? Like, watch our movie. It's it's a good thing for them to do. Like, Cryptic has actually been doing. Yeah, no, it's cool to get to use. Yeah, Crypt like... Cryptic has been doing a pretty good job lately. At for special ships they've been doing a fairly decent job of giving players an opportunity to see or use them first like they haven't they yeah, haven't been doing like... it for for lockbox ships but for like special event ships um you know the yeah, Odyssey. like you got to use the fully powered dyson yep. destroyer yeah so you know you you didn't buy the dyson sight unseen you got an opportunity to use it first here, you know, players have an opportunity to use an Odyssey, a Bortask, or a uh, Scimitar before they buy it. 
Um, yeah. I, given those are from like. It's, well, well, if you want, the, I guess one is is twenty five. Yeah. If you want, the if you want set. the full set, it's fifty bucks. So you know it's it's pretty expensive, but yeah, you know depending on how you play the game, it like, could be worth it. It's like how much a a hold. Yeah, but it's like, you know, oh, I would buy it, but yeah. And I've been I've still been pondering buying a set of the Science Destroyers, but it's for me it's more a question of which of the sets am I going to get more than like, am I just going to get the Romulan one or or should I bother yes. buying all three because I may use no, you're get the Romulan one. I may use the Federation one but well do you have the Vesta I have the Vesta which yeah like if I were to start this is pretty good science the Vesta is a pretty good science ship um I kind of see that's the thing it's like you know the Vesta's really cool except my science characters are Romulan on the KDF side so I'd never use yeah, it yeah like that's, that's all. the other the other big thing as well is that like I, I mean, pretty much only I could use it but mm. but like for me I mo I do the vast majority of the content on my engineer so that, that, yeah. that's the other thing why why I have I haven't quite you know uh pull the trigger on buying the uh, the science destroyers. I don't do a whole lot of content on my Romulan as it is. I should, because I, I need to get him geared up, but... Yeah, see, I, I kind of split my engineer, or my, my two characters, or those two characters. Uh, yeah. So that's why I wouldn't be opposed to getting that. Um, but yeah, uh... I, once we are finished showing off all the story, I'll probably be we'll probably still be doing some videos, and uh, I'll be spending some time showing off my uh, my collection of ships as we go through uh, some of the more repeatable content. That's what I'm thinking of. Yay. That's what I'm thinking of at the moment, at least. You know, as long as Mecha is still interested. Sure. <laughs> I, mean, I play this game anyway. Yeah, so. might as well. But anyway, uh, that'll be it for this supplemental episode. Uh, well, thank you. Yes, it will. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. Until next and time. I hope to see you all then. I didn't mean to sound so sinister there. Bye, everybody. Have fun. Happy First Contact Republic and Day of Honor. Also, happy what real world holidays happen soon. Happy Easter. But that's like two weeks away. Yeah, it's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Changes every year, so I don't know. <laughs> I like to call it Happy uh, Chocolate Bunny Jesus Day. But... <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.